Hello everybody, my name is Answin, and welcome back to Let's Play Victoria 2 as the United States. Let us continue on from where we last left off. So we're in freaking Colombia. It's going pretty alright. The only problem is that having a 24 stack Colombians and a 24 stack of us, I don't feel too confident engaging them directly. Because if we lose, that's just kind of the end of it. Uh, can we go with the next state in government? I do need state in government because I need state in government in order to get the manifest destiny, right? Okay, yeah, and he's saying government, and then I just need to be at peace, and that should be pretty easy. So as soon as this war's over, and I have this. So, it takes so long. Why does it take three years? I know it's 10,000 points, but damn, that's actually like a stupid amount of time. Okay, so we have another uh, national focus point. New England, maybe get some uh, clergy in there as well, fantastic. Because I think 4% is best for literacy. Actually, that's assuming what is the literacy rate in in New England. It's actually already pretty high. Like, a lot of it's already, like, 30%. It might just not even be worth it. Like, here it's pretty low. Like, 1% and everywhere. I think it's mostly the, the southern states that have bad literacy rate. We got a lot of 1% here. I don't know if the slaves count against us in terms of, uh... In terms of literacy rate. But the South in general is actually not very literate. So we're going to just influence them. Like that. Oh, so we have a... S oh, 12.9% of the population. I thought it was like 40% of the country slaves. Which seems like a bit much. You see, who has the most slaves? This seems like an Alabama thing. Where's Alabama? There it is. 38%. Tennessee. Oh, Tennessee actually doesn't have a lot of slaves. I'm surprised by that. Virginia. Yeah, a lot of slaves there as well. Is Georgia the... Who was the big slave state? I don't know. They're all pretty bad. That's fine. Yeah, no, they're absolutely marching towards Brazil. Which I think is a little bit silly, but sure. You, you know, you keep doing that. The wagon train of 1842. John Grant, former U.S. Army captain and fur trader... Uh, wagon train of 300 to 800 emigrants. One dollar per person. Ooh. Oh, there's a lot of things. Oregon City is renamed to Portland. We gain or Oh, so we just... Do we just annex Oregon? Oh, fantastic. Well, that's always nice. We can create a state in Oregon. Or actually a colony there. But at some point, there's going to be some, uh... You know, some problems over here. When? I'm not too sure. I think like the 1850s, 1860s, there's going to be like some sort of, you know, contest the Oregon Treaty. But with that, we can basically claim the, like, British Columbia, which would be good. We get like cores down here and that'll be, uh, it will be nice to do that. Especially if Canada becomes independent at some point in the future, it would definitely be good. As long as they're not a puppet state. And having puppets is kind of a little bit complicated for us because we can't really take states from them directly. So apparently Britain loves us and I don't like that. Actually, if they like us, then if we go over the infamy limit, I don't think they can attack us. I'm not too sure how it works. But I think their relations are like above 150 or above like 180 or something like that. They just will never attack you under any circumstance. So that could maybe be something we try. But, I think for now it's fine. God, these, uh, so the supply limits in the mounds are actually just so bad. Like, eight is actually awful. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, so apparently the Spanish are trying to get Brazil now as well, which is a little bit annoying. Venezuela is almost in our sphere. One thing, it took like three months. Like, it was very, very fast. Ah, uh, yes. Dig deep and greedy. There we go. Add them to our sphere. Fantastic. Venezuela. Thank you. Who else can we add? I, I'm, I'm curious. Just, you know, like Nicaragua. It's only 7.4 a day, actually, which isn't as much as I thought. We were getting like 7.4 with Venezuela. 5.74. Yeah, I feel like we should be getting higher with uh, them. I mean, our relations are a little bit low. 85. Huh, I'm not too sure, but we'll influence them anyway. Because I do kind of want to influence people. 
Even though I did say like three or four episodes ago that I was not going to do that, but it does make sense to kind of just influence everybody until I have actual plans to attack them. Because the removal from your sphere, it only costs one infamy, and by the time we're actually attacking people constantly, we will be at like a hundred infamy anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, we got a, you know, Colombian army. They're sieging down part of uh, Brazil in the, uh, you know, in the forest. And I guess it's a jungle. Like, is the jungle and the forest the same thing? They kind of are. It's kind of like two sides of the same coin. But hopefully Brazil can actually march here, you know, start sieging the territory for us. We're just going to march straight onto Bogota. Try to siege that down. Colombia, or Venezuela, I want you to join the war. And also, having everybody around here have truces with each other is also beneficial for me, so they don't... So that they don't expand when I don't want them to. Which is also important, because I want to kind of control the, um... I want to control everything in North and South America. I don't want anybody declaring war when I don't want them to. So I gotta basically watch everything like a hawk. Because, like, Bolivia is like, you know, they could attack Chile, you know? Do I want them to attack Chile? It's always a would, is the question I would have to ask at that point. So it looks like Colombia is going to come over here. They're going to fight the Brazilians. We're about to siege down Bogota. Does Bogota also have that's 32. It seems all right. Are we just taking the uh, yeah, base two percent attrition? So how long? Is it, okay, so it's December now. How long until they're friendly with us? Because it is about a point. It's slightly less than a point a day. So I guess it would still take a decent amount of time. We do those a you know a few thousand minutes with that. Okay, so they'll surrender now. And I think for now that's fine. We'll keep our troops stationed down here. Are you actually in the Okay, you actually are in the port. Fantastic. We also have kind of split uh Columbia up in half. I mean that's also good, you know, dividing, conquering. And when we can't spend all of our infamy. Or when we have to be a little bit conservative or infamy, it's, mo it's most important to take the highest production provinces first. Eventually, when we don't care, I think it would probably be better to take the cheapest. So it'd be like, take five states for like 15 war score apiece, for example. We'll probably be better in the future. But for now, we want to take basically whatever has the highest percent of war score. Because that's generally considered like the best. If that makes any sense. But there we go. So we basically, I think, cut Colombia's population in half. Like, what's the population of this state? This state's got a population of 209,000. Colombia has a space population of 300,000. So we basically took over half of Colombia. And a problem with that, I'm assuming this is for our immigrant bonuses. Fantastic. Of course, one of the problems with doing this is also one of the, uh, the Dixies are in the red, which is actually good because I kind of want to throw them at the enemy and just have them die, basically. But we can build a handful more of our transports, which is what I'm wanting to do. So yes, yeah, so build two more transports. Don't add P. So I guess we just have to stick down for a little bit. Are you still at war with somebody? Yeah, you're still at war here. So they might still win against this little guy, and then I think after that they might become uh, Guatemala. I'm not too sure. Our truce with Mexico has expired, though, so that is good to know. Also, well, apparently, uh, Texas still does not have an army. Okay, so... Yeah, okay, so it took a little bit of time, but we can get them up to... Friendly. I would really just like my... My cores, please? Texas, you should, you know, position for annexation. Please? Because I think if they do that, we do get their cores, even if we don't have Manifest Destiny yet. Unless unless it's a decision to annex Texas. Uh, what's this? Oh, Infamy? I would prefer not to do that. Oh no, this is the one for Cuba! That is kind of actually important for us. When do we need that? Current government is reactionary or 25% of the upper house is reactionary. Okay. Well, that is interesting. Because we would get the... Um, we 
cores on it, or do we just gain the CB? I think we do just get to gain the CB. Of course, no matter what, it's cheaper. God, it's like negative 150 with every single great power, which is a lot. Could we? I don't think we could afford losing 150 um, relation with every single great power. Like, if you look at them, you know, we look at everybody. For the most part, they like us. Asia hates us. I don't know why. But Europe loves us. North and South America love us, except for, you know, the people we've declared war on. But, you know, ignore that part for now. For the most part, everybody's okay. They're all pretty all right with what we're doing. Oh, okay, so now I gotta do the kind of, let's, like, we gotta kind of look, where do we want to expand next? So we've taken a little chunk of Colombia. Of course, it'll take a handful of wars to annex all of it. Because we have to basically get everybody down to one state before we can do the annexation CP. Which for some countries, like, you know, Brazil, or Argentina, it could be challenging. Actually, one of the interesting things is, huh, maybe 15 light. Are they all like 15? Yeah, okay. I was thinking potentially maybe we could annex like part of Chile and then colonize this, but maybe that just won't actually work. Because I think they get events to annex or to colonize this automatically so guessing it's not going to work out that way disappointingly enough so right now we have brazil and venezuela in our sphere and because i don't want to take infamy for no good reason we're going to kind of ignore them for now so our options are argentina not these these four because i don't want to take 22 infamy to annex one of these guys quite yet Chile, for the most part, I think is 300,000, 400,000, Peru, 500,000. So maybe Peru, Ecuador's capital is on the outermost state. If I can just do this correctly. Yeah, they're on this, like, these colors are actually very similar. But they're on this, like, bluish area over here. So maybe that's not going to be our best chance. Your capital is in this green province. But if we look at your population density, it's also mostly just in that city. A lot of people are in Cusco. So this is a potential... That's nothing really good there, either. Sulfur, I think, is actually important. But with only... Not that many people. Of course, the war with Mexico is coming sooner rather than later, which is always fantastic. Are any of you guys down here two states? I think you're, like, all one, right? Yeah, no. FRCA, when they eventually annex this guy, will be two states, but really, it doesn't really count. Yeah, no, everybody else here is just one. Which is a little bit disappointing. A war with the Netherlands for their colony also is potentially in the cards, depending on if they become a great power and who they're allied to at that point. But I think Peru, I think the sulfur is important. Because I'm pretty sure it's needed in, like, gunpowder and stuff. It's needed in fertilizer. And I think... Do you need fertilizer for... For weapons? Like, I can't even look. I'm not even allowed to build factories, so I just don't know. Am I allowed to build factories in, like, other countries? Which one... No, we're not allowed to build foreign factories either. We're not allowed to do anything, are we? I guess not. Of course, the Panama Canal at some point in the future is going to be important. I uh, like the 1880s, though. So we still got about 40 years until that. And there we go. So we got a few more boats being built. And are all, all of our railroads mostly, uh... Yeah, our railroad situation is absolutely A-OK. -okay. We can put a little bit of money into Texas. Of course, what we should actually also be doing is putting a little bit of money into, uh these guys so that when eventually anybody else is trying to influence them they get a little bit of a penalty for it even if we're only throwing like one little factory or one railroad in each country it just gives us a little bit of a bonus and also we're going to be annexing this land at some point in the future so it wouldn't hurt to have it all kind of uh which was Mexico City? Yeah, oh, we can't even build them anywhere. But we're going to annex this land eventually, so we're going to need to have railroads there at some point in the future regardless, so... 
Seems like this all kind of makes sense what I'm doing. The Oriental Crisis. Of course, we can't really do anything. There's a lot of things we can't really do just because we're not in Europe. Like right now, the Ottoman Empire is at war with France. And, um... The British are at war with Egypt. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like this weird, like, kind of mess down there in the Oriental Crisis. But I'm hoping that now... You can see the French did back... Is, are they friendly with Egypt? No, oh, Egypt's in the French... How is Egypt in the French fear? Also, the hostile towards me. So I guess that whole plan I had earlier just completely threw that off the table. But we'll, we'll see. Britain might even like, attack... I know, they're allied to each other. So the British and the French might not do anything. It's kind of interesting that they're at war with each other in the first place. But, you know, whatever. Wait, Spain. You're not a... No, you are still a great power. You're only allied to the Dutch. And that's interesting, actually. Because if we can attack the Spanish for, say, Puerto Rico, or, I mean, l hopefully Cuba. They do have a 33 stack there, which is a little bit uh, dangerous. Plays in a sense only a 5.5 infamy. If we get caught, like, at 19, it'll be, it'll be fine regardless. But it's entirely possible that we can basically blockade Cuba. Maybe take Puerto Rico? 95,000. But, but Cuba is just a lot better. It is just, it's just so much better, actually. Oh, Cuba. I would like to take you. You know what? Uh, we're going to send our navy. You just kind of explore here. Go to New Orleans. I'm just curious to see what the Spanish gear is in Cuba. Is it just that 33 stack? It is. Mostly infantry, a handful of cannons. So, I think if we declared war on Spain for Cuba, and we just landed troops in... You know, over here? Basically, we just don't go to Havana. We land, let's say, anywhere else. Even if it's just in, um... Like, here? Make them attack us while we're in the hills, and hopefully we can kind of win out there. Okay, who else can we influence? 160, 100 with Honduras. There's really not anybody living here, is there? So we go 7.8. Honduras, we can get up to 7.3. We might as well influence both at the same time. These Central American countries are probably going to be the last ones we take. Oh, well, that's hard to say. Probably it, they probably won't be like the last ones we take, but they we won't attack. We won't be attacking these guys until really Nicaragua. We won't be attacking these guys until we can safely go over 100 infamy. And when we can safely go over 100 infamy, why are you not in my sphere? Oh, because you went bankrupt and I, I chose the event to get a CB on you. That's my fault. I have to completely redo that again. Whoops. But, yeah, like, these guys are going to go, probably going to, like, one after another. Maybe around, like, 1900. We just go annex, 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 annex. Especially since Panama is also probably going to be independent at that point. We can just annex all these guys in just five or six separate little tiny wars. Ecuador at some point also might just become a one state country because Peru... Has a, you know, they have cores over here. They have cores in Ecuador, which they could maybe go take. If anything, I would almost encourage Peru to do that. I, there's nothing I can do to kind of influence them. But Peru, if you want to attack Ecuador with no allies while you have cores on like half their country, you can just do it. You know, Ecuador's got two brigades, you have two brigades, and the backing of the United States. I will let you take him. But I don't think the AI is going to, disappointingly enough. Costa Rica wants an alliance. Absolutely a-okay with by me. We still got another, like, um... It's a little bit faster now. Uh, I think that's about two or three months faster than what it was when we began. But still isn't really that much. And have any CSA cores showed up yet? No. Of course, there might. we also might just get the thing where we just, you know, outlaw slavery just automatically. Well, not automatically, but look, we already have 47.1% of the vote. 
Over the years after 1845, one of the following must be true. I think we do have the slavery debate, right? Yeah. When do you expire? 1867. Okay, so we, we can't actually outlaw slavery until 1867, at like the earliest, I guess. Unless I think some other event just outlaws it. But we shall see. Uh, we're just going to, you know, well, we'll take these horses, throw them into this 21 stack. But I do think this is going to be a good time to end this episode. Thanks for watching. My name is Anthem. If you've enjoyed, my thumbs up. If you're not enjoyed, click thumbs down. Don't forget to subscribe. And goodbye.